Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Capture One has a reputation of doing a great job editing Fuji RAW files, and that is absolutely true. But what I found, it also does a great job editing Sony RAW files. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate that to you. This image was taken with the Sony a7R IV that of course is a high resolution full frame camera. And what I found is some scenes that I capture with that camera are very difficult to edit in Lightroom. But if I take those same RAW files and try to edit them in Capture One, I'm usually very successful doing the edits there. Specifically, I found scenes that have a lot of dynamic range. Of course, this is a sunset. I shot directly into the sun. So they're there's a lot of bright areas, a lot of dark areas, so the scene had a lot of dynamic range. It doesn't seem that Lightroom is able to really, you know, get that full dynamic range um, when you edit it, whereas with Capture One, I'm able to do it. Now, as you look at my workspace, it's going to probably look a lot different than yours. That's because with Capture One, you're able to customize the workspace and you have a lot of flexibility to put things where you want them. You'll notice I have pretty much all the tools over on the right hand side, whereas by default they're on the left. I do have a video where I demonstrate how to customize Capture One's workspace. I'll have that linked in the description below this video. Now, as far as this image is concerned, I mentioned that um, it's got a lot of dynamic range and that camera has a lot of exposure latitude and it should have captured all this dynamic range. But if I turn on the exposure warnings right away without any edit editing done to it at all, you'll notice that I have red on the brightest areas. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. And there isn't any blue on the dark areas, but that's what would happen when you have exposure warnings on. If you're crushing the shadows or you're clipping the shadows, you'd have a blue overlay on the shadows. So what I like to do when I have an image like this is I take it into Capture One and I immediately turn on those exposure warnings. Then what I do is I go to the exposure tab. And specifically this slider, the brightness slider, Lightroom doesn't have a brightness slider. And brightness sliders are very powerful in that if I move it to the right, of course it's going to, going to increase the brightness. But what it will do is it will not bring any of those brightest areas past clipping. So it'll bring it right up to the edge where it's going to clip, but then it won't clip anymore. With, a, let's say, an exposure control, if I move that to the right, I'll start to clip more and more of the highlights. The brightness control, I'll move that to the right, and you'll see it's minimally. It's just adding a touch, but I'm opening up those midtones and the shadows considerably. Um, conversely, if you have an image that you need to move the brightness to the left, it won't crush the shadows. It will bring the shadows to the point where they're clipping, but then it won't allow them to clip, at least not that much, as much as, let's say, exposure. So I could open this up considerably, and it's just minimally adding to the clipping. That's why I really like that brightness control. I'm gonna bring saturation up a little. That's gonna to add to my clipping. Now, of course, for those of you that maybe are new to post-processing, you usually don't want to clip the highlights or the shadows. If you're clipping the highlights, that means it's so bright there's no detail there. If you go to print it, you won't get any ink put down on the paper and there's no detail being rendered. Conversely with the shadows, it's just going to be all black ink, right? So if it's too dark. So usually you don't want to clip sometimes at all, sometimes minimally. Personally, I don't like to clip the highlights at all, but I don't mind clipping the shadows just a little bit. It's just my personal taste. Now I'll jump down to high dynamic range and um, the shadows are still very dark. So I'm gonna open those up. And then let's deal with these highlights. Let's take the highlight slider down and I've got rid of just about all the clipping. There's just a tiny bit there. I'll go to the white slider and see if I could clean the rest of that up. And I did. Now I mentioned I don't mind clipping the shadows just a little bit. So I'll take to the black slider and I'll move that. And if I keep moving, you'll see I'll start to get that blue overlay. So I'm clipping, 
but I really don't want, this scene doesn't need me to clip the shadows at all. So we'll just bring it down like that. So really I move six sliders. In the exposure tab, I move brightness and saturation. In the high dynamic range tab, I moved all four of those sliders. And you can see I already got a pretty good edit on it. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. And the exposure latitude of the Sony A7R4 was able to capture the dynamic range in the scene. So I'm not clipping anything. And I couldn't do this with Lightroom. I just could not process this image in a satisfactory way. Now, to finish this off, what I usually do now at this point is turn off the exposure warnings, and then I'll go to levels. And what I like to do at levels is this slider that's on the far left, I go to the bottom part of it and just tweak it over just a little bit. It's gonna make the darker parts a little darker. And then on the far right, I take this one and I just tweak it to the left. It makes the brighter parts just a little brighter. So I'm adding some contrast uh, to the image. I'm probably clipping a touch. You can see now I'm starting to clip little parts of the shadows. And I mentioned I don't mind clipping the shadows. And I have a tiny bit of clipping up here around the sun. But it is the sun. I'm shooting directly in it. So I don't mind doing that. So I'll take that off. So you just don't want to clip like I was right at the beginning where the entire sun area here and much around it was all clipping. Definitely don't want that. That tiny bit of clipping is acceptable, at least for me. It is, you know, it does come down to personal choice. Curve, I'm not going to do anything here, but sometimes I will do that. It was shot at ISO 100. I don't see any noise at all, so I don't think I need to do noise reduction. Clarity, let's add some clarity. Let's add some structure. Make a little, little more uh, crisp looking. Uh, color editor, let's mess around with some of these colors. Let's increase saturation a bit here, a bit there, and maybe take the lightness of the blue down a little bit. And color balance, I don't think I need to do anything there. Let's add a tiny bit of sharpening. Typically I would zoom in a little, but that looks actually really sharp. Actually it's over sharp. So that, and then vignetting. I like to add a dark vignette often on my landscape images. It just kind of draws people's attention more towards the middle of the image. And that's it. So you could see how easy that was, how fast it was to process a rather difficult image to process. Again, there's before. And you could see that it's overall underexposed, of course, because I exposed for the sky. But even with exposing for the sky, I had part of the sky that was overexposed. So I had a lot of dynamic range in the scene, and I still was able to get a very good edit out of it. So um, if you aren't using Capture One for your RAW files, uh, Sony RAW files, you may want to try it. They do have a fully working free trial, I believe. Um, give it a try. Um, I think you might be surprised how well it does. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.